Now look at here. The normal space of a 50 by what? 60 matrix A is 40 dimensional. If we want to find rank of A, okay? By rank zero. Rank A plus dimensional no A is what? Huh? Is 20 plus what? This is, look at here. By rank zero. Rank A plus no space what? Dimension. Together, they should add up to number of columns in what? Of the matrix. And this matrix has 60 columns, okay? And they, they tell us the no space is what? Dimension 40. So ring A must be 20 because 20 plus 40 equal to 60, okay? This is very, very trivial if you still remember the rank zero. Now, what's the no A? Okay, look, look at here. What's the no A? This is the one that uh, Leo just asked, okay? So this one is x1, x2, x3, x4. So the no A is you are correcting x. Okay? Such that A times x equal to 0. You are correcting such x. And x is 1, 2, 3, 4. You follow the column number. You follow the column number. Okay? Are you with me? So what is the color number of the matrix A? 60. Okay? Matrix A has 60. So now space A is a subspace of what? 60. Okay? It's a color number. That's no A. Okay? Just like this one here. Hmm? 1, 2, 3, 4. A is what? A is 3 by 4. You follow the color number. Right? X1, X2, X3, X4. Follow the color number. So it's a subspace in what? Huh? Of color number, 60. Now, what is color of A? Well, color of A is 10 by what? It's 10 by the A1, A2, A3, A4. Okay? But here, each one has three entries. So after linear combination of C1, A1, C2, A2, C3, A3, and C4, A4, you will end up with something in what? A vector. Right? You end up with a vector in what? Huh? in the um, B1, B2, B3. It's in R3. Okay? So this follow what? This follow in the number of row of matrix A. Okay? So this matrix the row number is 50. So the answer is going to be what? Going to be 50. So what is I? It's a subspace of what? R50. This is a sus subspace of what? R60. Okay? This is just an exercise. The sample exam question, just an exercise in my lecture notes. Okay, now I give you what? A new term, but this new term is what? Is actually related to something I already covered, okay? Uh, we say A is a linear combination. Uh, we say A is a linear transformation of T, the null space of T. Remember the the linear transformation. You can write in its matrix form, standard matrix form, right? So the null space of such a linear transformation, or some people say what? Kernel, okay? You can replace what? The null space by kernel, okay? Of such a T, is a set of all u in v such that the linear transformation what on u map to zero that's called kernel but kernel is just what the null space okay so this is a, a new term to replace what null space okay just for your information now let's look at the next one okay 
we're gonna what? We're gonna prove uh, the theorem now. Okay, we're gonna. This is a proof. Um, look at look at here. Look at here. We want to show what? We want to show. Um. If this is low space, okay, the low space, then this is what? Huh? The space orthogonal to low space of A. Okay? It's going to be no A. Why this is true? I'm going to show you the proof now. In mathematic proof, okay, in mathematic proof, if we want to show A and B, this is two set. Set A and set B. If we want to show two set are equal, you, you need to show first what? You need to show A is inside B, okay? The set A, everything set A has, B has. Anything X in A, well, X also in B. That means B is a bigger set, contains A. And you also need to show B is also what? Inside of A. So everything B has, A also has. So if A contained in B and B also contained in A, the only situation you have A contained in B and B contained in A is A equal to B. Okay? That is a big picture of the proof. Okay? That's a big picture of the proof. Now, the proof of the theorem three, let A be a N by N matrix, okay? Let A be a, a N by matrix. Uh, now, what is theorem three? We say rows A's diagonal complement. We say those A is what? Orthogonal complement. Okay, we say row A is what? Orthogonal complement is the null space of A. Why is that two? Let's look at the proof. Okay, I use a very simple example. The given matrix A is three by four. Okay, by the row column rule for computing AX equal to zero. AX equal to zero and then the null space of A going to be x, a x equal to zero. You're correcting all such what? All such x, okay, all such x. So, look at here. If this is three by four, a one, one, a one, two, a one, three, times a one, four, times what? x one, x two, x three, x four. This, times this, this, times this, give me this. So this is two uh, vectors, uh, inner product, give me zero. That means this vector and this vector, they are orthogonal. Same thing. This times this, give me this zero. That means this vector and this vector are also orthogonal. This times this, are also orthogonal, okay? So, in this case, we say x in what? No space of A, okay? It satisfies the solution, right? If I tell you x is in no space A, then x times all is what? Times the row one of A, 
must equal to zero, inner product equal to zero. And inner product for what? Second row is also zero. Huh? The third one also equal to zero. Okay? Are you with me so far? So this one, it's transposed. I can write like this. A11, A12, A11, A12, A13, A14. A11, A12, A13, A14 is this vector here. This row, I transpose, become this vector. This row, I transpose, become this vector. Okay? Are you with me? So, the row space a is spent by these four vectors, uh, by these three vectors. Okay, let me try one more time. First row, second row, third row. If I make a transpose, they will look like this. Okay, and they are what? Make an inner product with the x will equal to zero. Okay, so that means what? That means any x that ties the row one, row two, row three, inner product equal to zero, they must in what? Huh? They must in the null space of A. Huh? Orthogonal. Let me try one more time, okay? Um, mm. Okay, so let's see. The first one, we only show you this. Don't worry about this. This is very trivial after we prove this one. Okay, so we only look at here. Okay, we say row A is what? Orthogonal complement is the null space of A. Okay, how can we prove that? The idea is use the one I just mentioned, right? A is in B and B also in A, then A, B are equal, okay? So I go is what? I go is this direction first. Go this way, okay? Go this way. Go this way means if X is in in what? Row A orthogonal complement, then X should be what? In no A, okay? So that's, that's a proof direction. So E, to be easy to be understood. If I say X is in what? Low A orthogonal complement, okay? Look at here. If I tell you X in what? In no space A. And actually, I think this way goes this way. <laughs> but it's fine. I will explain again later, okay? If x in no a, if I tell you given x is in the no space of a, what does that mean? That means ax equal to zero. Right? a times x equal to zero. Okay? That means a11, a12, a13, a14 times x equal to zero. That means this times this equal to zero, and this times this equal to zero, and this times this equal to zero. Okay? And since low a is spent by what? By this four, uh, by these three vectors. Okay? So, when I say AX is no A, for any X in no A, I can also show you what? It's in low A complement. Because this one is perpendicular for what? Huh? For each of those what? Huh? Row one, row two, row three. Okay, row one, row two, row three. So, um, so for any X in what? No space of A, it's it's what also in what orthogonal complement or low a, okay. This is low one, low two, low three, and times x always equal to zero. So x is also in what huh? the low a orthogonal complement. Okay. Now the other direction, if x is orthogonal to low a, then x is orthogonal to each row in a. Just reverse the pr the proof. 
okay? If x is orthogonal to row A, then x is orthogonal to each row in A. And hence, they must be what? Inner product, A times x equal to zero. So x what? A x equal to zero. You correct such x, x is what? In no A, okay? Because no A is what? No A is a correction of all such x. So both direction proof, therefore what? They are equal, okay? They are equal. And the second proof is very easy, okay? The column A orthogonal congruent is no of what? AT congruent. This don't need to a big proof. Just use what? Use the one we proved earlier. Two of the two. If I call row A transpose is column A, and I plug in what I get in what? Earlier. Low A transpose congruent is column A congruent, which is what? No A transpose. You just plug in the outcome. Okay? Here. From here to here, plug it in. Okay? Low A transpose is column A, and you plug it in low A transpose. And this is what? Huh? Orthogonal congruent. Okay, but this is just carbon A orthogonal component. And that is what? Huh? Use this one here. No A transpose. Okay, no A transpose. So the second one is obtained from what? From first one. Okay. Okay, we call this is we cover in the first quiz. If I say u dot v, that is what? The inner product is the norm of u, the length of u times the length of v times cosine theta. Okay, this is u. This is u, this is v. And this is theta. Okay. For non-zero vector u v in r square or r three. Now next one introduce you a concept called orthogonal set. Suppose we given u one, u two, u three. U one is three one one, u two is minus one two one, u three is minus one half two, and seven over two. We say is u one, u two, u three this three vector. From an orthogonal set, well, what does that mean? That means we need to check this and this inner product equal to zero. This inner product with u3 equal to zero, and this two inner product with u3 equal to zero. So we need to check the following three, okay? Any two, any what? Selected what? Two vectors. Their inner product should be equal to zero. u1 dot u2 equal to zero. u1 dot u3 equal to zero u2 dot u3 equal to zero. Any two vector, their inner product equal to zero. And this is actually the case. All three are what? Huh? All the three what? Inner products, they actually equal to zero. Let's take a quick look. Three times minus one is, this is what? This is minus three. Three times minus one, minus three. One times two is two. One times one is one. So they add up to what? Add up to zero, okay? The other two you can check in a similar way. Now, um, the important one is this one, okay? S, if I tell you S is U1, U2 up UP is an orthogonal set of what? Non-zero vector in Rn. They are non-zero vectors. If they are orthogonal, okay? If they are orthogonal sets, then we can claim S is linearly independent. And if they are linearly independent, and hence is the basis for the, the subspace spent by S, okay? Now, how are we gonna prove this? How are we gonna prove this, okay? Um, let's look at here. Uh, let me stop here for a minute. So, theorem 4. 
if I give you u1 up to up, the series is called s. And I tell you s is what? An orthogonal set. Then you can say s is what? Linearly independent. Okay? In Rn. And hence, it can be a basis for the subspace spent by s. Okay? So, um, let's look at here. Okay? Let u be what? c1 times u1, c2 times u2, plus all the way up to cp times up for some scalar, c1, c2, cp. Suppose I can find c1, c2, cp, p scalar. So c1 times u1, plus all the way up to cp times up equal to zero. Here I don't care c1, cp, they are all equal to zero, or some of them are equal to zero. I, I don't worry about that right now, okay? But what I'm going to do next is what? Is I can write zero as zero times u1. Why this is true? Because if zero, then times any vector huh, should be zero. But I can rewrite zero as c1 u1 plus all the way up to cp up times u. And I expand it. c1 u1 times u1. c1 u1 times u1 plus c2 u2 times u1, c2 u2 times u1, plus all the way up to cp up times u1. And what do you know about orthogonal set? Orthogonal set is for anything that i, j not equal, okay? If i is not equal to j, then orthogonal set any two element, mu i in the product with uj must be equal to zero. So that's why they all become zero. And the only one left will be the C1. And U1 times U1 is just what? The length of the U1 square, okay? But what do you know about U1? U1 is non-zero non vector, so the length is what? If U1 is non-zero vectors, the non-square is not zero, okay? So if this is not zero, not zero times C1 equal to zero. That means C1 must be zero. Okay? That means C1 must be zero. So this implies C1 must be what? Uh, let's see. C1 is not a zero factor. This implies C1 is what? Sorry, I make a mistake here. Okay? This one should be, this implies C1 must be equal to zero. Look at here. C1 times the length of what? Non-zero factor. This is not zero. C1 times the length equal to zero. Then C1 must be equal to zero. That's the only possibility. So we repeat the process. Okay, we repeat the process. Okay, zero equal to what? Zero times U2. Okay, then everything not equal will become zero. So the only term left is C2 times U2 times U2. And that is U2 squared. But again, because this is non-zero vector. So we can say C2 is also equal to zero. So go through the whole process. We can find C1 up to Cp, they all equal to zero. So we can claim S must be what? Huh? Linearly independent. So look at what, what, learn from, what, what we learned from theorem four. If S is an orthogonal set, okay? Is an orthogonal set of all, all non-zero vector in Rn then hmm, S must be what? A linearly independent, which is what we just proved, okay? This is a very beautiful proof. Okay, we start the recording, okay? Definition. What do we mean by an orthogonal basis. What do we mean by an orthogonal basis? An orthogonal basis for a subspace W of Rn is a basis for what? For W. Okay? A orthogonal basis for a subspace W of Rn is a basis for what? For, for W. So, in my previous picture here, this, this plane, you can consider the plane is W plane. 
ओके तो एन ऑफ़ोगोनल प्रोसेस फॉर सरफेस डब्ल्यू ऑफ़ आर एन Okay, let me try one more time. Sorry for the coughing. An orthogonal basis for a subset W of R n is a basis for W that is also a, an orthogonal set. So make long story short, a orthogonal basis is what two conditions need to be satisfied. First one, you need to be what the set need to be orthogonal, and it must be a basis for W. Two conditions. Need to be satisfied. Okay, now let's look at the proof. If I let u one up to u p be an orthogonal basis of a subspace W of R n, then each y in W has a unique y, unique representation. This is a very important reason why we. Define the concept of orthogonal basis. Okay, orthogonal basis. If this is orthogonal basis, okay. If this is orthogonal basis, then for each y in the subspace W, they has a unique representation. Okay, as linear combination of u one up to u p. In fact. If I write y as c y c one u one up to c p u p, then each c j can be write as y times u j divided by u j in the product with u j, j from one to what to p. Okay, and why is this is true? Okay, the proof is still very constructive. Okay. So, given u one up to u p is an orthogonal basis, okay, for W, then for each y in W, y can be represents as c one u one, c two u two, up to c p u p, for some scalar c p, okay. Now, if I make a inner product y dot u one. That means the whole thing dot by u one, just like it before. If i not equal to j, then u i dot u j will be what? Will be just zero because that's orthogonal set. Okay. So all the other gun only c one times u one dot u one. Okay. So in this case, what do you know? Huh? This is u one dot u one. It's just a number. The length of what? The length of u one. Just a number. And this number is not zero. Because this is non-zero vector. Okay, so. What's C one? You move the ten to the other side. It's y dot u one divided by u one dot. This is a mistake. <laughs> this is also u one. Sorry. Okay. So this is y dot u one over u one dot u one. Okay. So that's y dot u one and divided by what u one squared. Okay, now for uniqueness, for uniqueness, okay, for uniqueness, how can I prove uniqueness? Well, this is one way of representation. Y equal to c one u one up to c p u p, and so y I can write the in the other representation the c one prime u one c p prime u u p which is equal to c one u one plus c p u p 
If I combine these two, I can rewrite a C1 minus C1 prime U1 plus all the way up to CP minus CP prime UP equal to zero. But U1 up to UP are linearly independent. So those number has to be one. So C1 minus C1 prime to CP times CP prime must be all equal to zero because U1 up to UP is what? Linearly independent, okay? So those number must equal to zero. That means C1 has to be what? Equal to C2, CP equal to CP. Is that okay? So that is unique, okay? Um, let me try one more time. If Y can be written as C1, U1, C2, U2, and CP, UP, and the other representation, if it's not unique, right? You can write as U1, C1 prime, U1, all the way up to CP prime, UP. But this is also equal to this representation, and you combine the like terms. Huh? C1 minus C1 prime U1 plus CP minus CP prime UP equal to zero. But you know U1 up to UP is linearly independent, therefore the corresponding what coefficient must all equal to zero. That means C1 must be equal to C1 prime, CP must equal to CP prime. So the, the representation is unique. You don't have a second way of what? Writing the system in different way, okay? This is a very nice proof. Okay, suppose I give you one. Mm -hmm. I give you three vectors. And the three vectors are u1, u2, u3. Okay? And so u1, u2, u3 is an orthogonal set. Okay? Orthogonal set. It's very easy, you just in the product or what? Any two two of them, they will be equal to zero. Okay. Um and the other way you can look at this. You let A equal to what? This is U1. This is U2. This is U3. Determinal A is not equal to zero. Okay? Determinal A is not equal to zero. So this is invertible. That means they are linearly what? Independent. Okay? So span S, this three vector, will span what? R3. Are you with me so far? We'll spin R3. So, right now I ask you to write Y618 minus 8 as a linear combination of what? The vector in S. Okay? And remember, I already showed this is orthogonal and this is the basis in R3. So, the representation of Y with respect to what? This set is unique. Okay? And how can I write it? So I write y equal to c1 u1, c2 u2, and c3 u3. Use the one I just introduced you. c1 is what? y dot u1 over u1 dot u1. And the computation is very easy. u1 dot u1 is what? 3 squared is 9, 1 squared is 1, 1 squared is 1, 9 plus 1 is 10, 10 plus 1 is 11. So this is 11. And u dot u dot u1 uh, y dot u1 is 6, 1 minus 8. In the product with u1, you're going to get is 11. So c1 is 11 over 11 is what? Is 1. So this is this is 1. Okay? And similarly, you can find c2. What's c2? c2 is uh, u2 dot u2. Is u2. And y dot what? Huh? u2. Okay, so you find this is minus two and minus two. So you can express Y as a unique, this is unique. Okay. Know that if the base is not orthogonal, then it will be necessary to solve the system of what? Linear equation. 
in order to find the weights, okay? So it's very important, that's why we cover orthogonal. If it's not orthogonal, back to what we learned at the beginning of the semester, you need to solve the linear system to find the weights of C1 up to what? Cp or X1 up to Xp, okay? That is precisely the reason why we cover orthogonal. It gives us what? Convenience. Okay? Now, in orthogonal projection, given u, u is a vector from here to here. This is my u. It's a non zero vector in R in space. And we want to decompose y, this one, into the sum of two vectors, okay? We want to decompose y, one in here, one in here. But this y hat is what? Alpha times u, okay? In u direction, times what? A scalar, okay? They have y hat and u has the same direction. But y hat is what? Huh? Is a scalar times u. So the only difference between y hat and u is y hat is what? Huh? Y hat is, and u have different lengths, but they have the same direction. And compared to the y hat, I want to find a perpendicular vector. Okay, so let me try one more time, z. That is to say, for y, I want to decompose y into one, two parts. One is y hat part, one is z part. So y hat plus z, give me y. y hat plus z, give me y, okay? So I decompose y into two components. One is what? Huh? A vector in, y di in u direction. And the other vector is what? Pretend, pretend, per what? Perpendicular to what? To u, okay? So y hat plus z give me y, okay? So another way to say it is z is what? Is y minus y hat. So if you look at here. This is minus what? y hat. So you decompose, you what? So y hat, so y, y hat, y hat, y minus y hat, okay? This is y or you say y plus minus y hat equal to what, z, okay? y plus my, minus y hat, give me z, okay? z is one perpendicular to what? To y hat. So I decompose y into two parts. One is this, one is this, okay? Now look at here. Say zero is equal to z dot u, okay? Z is perpendicular. This is perpendicular to u. So their inner product will equal to zero. But z is y minus y hat, okay? Z is y minus y hat dot u. So that's a prime multiplication of our inner product is y dot u minus what? y hat dot u, okay? You look at here. y hat, y hat is alpha u, so you plug in alpha u here. So it's y dot u minus alpha u dot u, alpha u dot u. So what do you know? Moving this turn to the other direction, you have alpha u equal to what? y u, okay? This is a non-zero one, huh? This is non-zero. The length of what? The length square, right? This is okay. 
the u length square because u is not equal to zero. It's non-zero vector. So this is non-zero. So you move back to here. Alpha is y u divided by u dot u. That means y hat. Okay, look at here. We say we say what? Y hat is alpha u. And we find alpha is, is this term. Y u over u u. And because y hat is alpha u, you just plug in what? Alpha in here. So it's u y u over u u. Huh? Times u. So y hat is equal to y u over u u. This is alpha u. Okay? So the orthogonal projection of y onto u. Okay? Orthogonal projection, co what? Co y hat. Look at here. This is a vector y. Huh? Orthogonal projection in u direction going to be y hat. Okay, this is orthogonal projection. On what? On you. Okay. And we can see u in this case goes through zero. So I can extend a little bit. I can say the orthogonal projection onto what? Spin by u, which is a line in the picture. Huh? This is a line goes through the origin. So it's a it's what? It's a subspace. Okay. And how about the perpendicular part? Okay. Z is what? Y minus Y hat. And this Y hat, as we say, is alpha U. And this is alpha, this is U. So this is called the complement of U, orthogonal to U. Okay? So let me try one more time. If you give me a non-zero vectors in IN, and another vector Y also in IN, what I want to do is I make a projection towards what? Pro make a projection of y into what? Huh? Use direction. And this is a projection, orthogonal projection amount. And the other one, I can find z as y minus y hat, which is this one. So a y, given back to y in Rn, I decompose as a sum of what? The projection part on u direction and another, huh? vector, which is perpendicular to what? Y hat. Together, they add up to what? They add up to Y, okay? Now look at here. Let's work on one concrete example so you know what's going on. Y is 7, 6, and U is 4, 2, okay? We want to find orthogonal projection of y onto u, and then y write y as a sum of two orthogonal what, vectors, one in span u and one in orthogonal to u. Okay, so we find basic what huh? computed computation blocks u y inner product u is forty, u dot u is twenty. So the orthogonal projection on y onto u is what this is alpha u and therefore this is our y hat okay y hat is the orthogonal projection of y onto u okay so this is alpha u this is alpha when we find the orthogonal projection of y onto u is a4. And the component of y orthogonal to u is y minus y. Huh? y hat, which is our z. Okay? y is what? 7, 6. And y hat, we just obtained, is a4. So 7, 6 minus a4 is minus 1, 2. Okay? So let's see. Y can be decomposed. Y is what? 7, 6. This is given. I write into two components. One is Y hat. 
this is what? Huh? The orthogonal projection of y on u's direction. Okay? This is y hat. Plus the one perpendicular to y hat. y minus y hat, which is minus 2, 1. So y can be decomposed as two vectors, y hat and z. And y hat and z, y hat is this, z is this. Okay? Let's look at the picture. Uh, before we look at the picture, let's check what the orthogonal the orthogonality. These two are perpendicular to each other. So the inner product A4 dot minus 1, 2 should equal to what? A times minus 1 minus A. 4 times 2 is 8, so they add up to 0. So no problem. These two are orthogonal vectors. Okay? So let's look at the picture. Y is what? 7, 6. From here to here is 7, 6. I decompose into what? Y hat, which is alpha u. Hmm? A4. Plus this part is what? Minus 1, 2. So y hat plus, plus z go to what? 7, 6. This one is perpendicular. This vector is perpendicular to this vector. Okay? Done. And the span u is a subspace which goes to what? The origin, 0, 0. Okay? It's span u. And that line A is what? Y equal to 1 over 2x. Um, introduce you the orthogonal decomposing theorem. Summarize from what we just discuss discussed. Theorem, let W be a subspace of Rn, then each Y in Rn can be written uniquely in the form y equal to y hat plus z, where y in what? w, and z is in what? Huh? The orthogonal or, or what? Complement of what? Of w. In fact, if u1 up to up is any orthogonal basis of w, y hat can be written as this, and z is equal to y minus y hat, okay? Then we're gonna introduce you the grand schmidt process. Okay, this is a grand schmidt process. Suppose you give me x1 up to xp from a subspace w of Rn. Defined by v1 equal to x1, okay? A second vector in the construction is based on x1 and the second vector in subspace wx2. And by this formation, we can pretty sure v2 will be perpendicular to what? v1, okay? And follow the same process. V3 will be perpendicular to both V1 and V2. And I keep doing it. Next month to VP. Okay? Sometime, now let's just go to VP. Okay? You can just go to VK. VP is what equal to XP. And by this construction, you can believe VP will perpendicular to what? V1, V2, all the way up to VP minus 1. Thus, V1, Vp is an orthogonal basis for W. In addition, huh? span x1 up to xp. This one can be what? Can be only k if there are linearly dependency between what? x1 to xp. They were expressed by what? Huh? Those orthogonal what? Set. And those orthogonal set will form a basis. So this is orthogonal basis. Okay? And the span space will be exactly the same as the, the original one span. But important ones, they are orthogonal, okay? And for any vector in what? In the space, there is a unique huh, representation. That's idea, okay? Uh, this grand schmidt tell you exactly the way how you construct what? An uh, orthogonal what? basis, okay? By given what? Huh? different x1 to xp in the iron space.